Foot pain. Lots of people have it. Lots of things that cause it. Today we're talking a bunch of reasons, but really focusing down on Morton's Neuroma. What is it? Who gets it? What's the deal? Stick around till the end. I'll tell you who Morton is. Okay, a little medical history. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Winnie. I'm Dr. Paul Salzo. We have a guest today, Dr. Dr. Danny Aurora. Thanks for having me, guys. He's been here many times. He's a foot and ankle specialist. He's going to tell us all He's about this injury. Awesome foot and ankles. I got to thank you. I've sent you family members. <laughs> yeah. I've sent you friends. Thank you for taking such oh, good it's care. It's my pleasure. Them. Happy to help. You do an awesome job. We appreciate it. Okay, so when someone's talking about a Morton's neuroma, let's start at the beginning. What are these people showing up with? How do they present? Yeah, so a Morton's neuroma, sometimes just the loose, everyone thinks you have foot pain and they feel like some numbness in the toes and it's just, oh, you got a Morton's neuroma. But essentially a Morton's neuroma is where, um, well, what is it? Let's talk about that sure. first. So it's basically a nodule uh, on a nerve, on one of the plantar nerves or the interdigital nerves uh, of the foot. Um, usually patients have you know, numbness in a web space between the toes most common between the second and third, could be sometimes between the third and fourth toe. Sometimes have burning sensation, can be associated with long, uh, after a long walk or wearing tight shoes, um, and they get sharp pains, and it's almost like a shooting pain that kind of really is in between those two toes. Okay, so skinny shoes might be one of the Yeah, 100%, so factors. I mean, a lot of times you see that, and it's classically described, people who wear very, very tight, you know, uh, tip shoes, um, you know, people who are in footwear for a long period of time, they're on their feet for a long period of time, you get some swelling in the foot, and that could elicit those symptoms. That's but, why I stopped wearing those. Oh my. Yeah, wash those high heels. Right? <laughs> what about the cowboy boot? Does that predispose you to it, do you think? Yeah, I can. If you're, it's got a bit of a heel and it's pretty pointed. It depends. Yeah. If you're cramming your toes in the front there, it definitely could be uh, something that could trigger it. Okay, sorry, Yellowstone. Yeah, I think it is Yellowstone. Yeah. yeah, and also runners, right? Commonly people that are wearing snug or fitting shoes and a lot of pounding on their feet, some just can get Correct. more yeah. trouble as well. And again, so like it, essentially it's a nodule on a nerve. Right. The nerve kind of really lives between the two bones of the foot in between the toes and you get that compression and the nerve just fires and it gets angry and right. that's where you get those symptoms. So that'd be a true neuroma. Um, sometimes you get scarring on the nerve that could right. present like a neuroma. Sometimes you get swelling around the nerve that puts pressure on the nerve that causes the symptoms like a neuroma as well. Okay, so it can be actual the nodule, some scarring, or just some swelling around there that cause it. So we've talked about some of the risk factors, what your symptoms are, the burning pain, pain in the foot, numbness in the toes maybe, mostly between the second and third toes you mentioned. And third and fourth, so and it third depends. And fourth, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, so what happens if you think you have this, you go see your doctor, what's your doctor going to do? Yeah, so I think the big thing is getting the true diagnosis. A lot of times people have foot pain and it's just referred in that area and it's not a true neuroma. Um, that's usually diagnosed, could be, well, usually diagnosed with a mixture of, you know, a good clinical exam and some imaging. Okay. Um, but there are other things that could present like a neuroma. Sometimes people are, are misdiagnosed with that and you can have what's called metatarsalgia which is pain underneath the metatarsals or in the padding of the foot. It's very commonly seen. Yeah. Some people have bursitis, which is inflammation of the kind of fat tissue around in that area that causes the, the neuroma-like symptoms. Um, you know, sometimes people have deformity in the toes, hammer toes, bunions, that kind of stuff. So those could be, you know, a combination. So I think the, the key is to really identify the problem and then to determine how to go about treating it. And so on physical exam, were you a big believer in the thumb index test where essentially you're going to the area that's sore and then squeezing it to see if this reproduces the pain or the numbness and tingling? Yeah, so I mean, the first thing is the inspection, how they stand, you know, if they have any deformities, if they have really the curly toes, then you know they're gonna overload the metatarsals. And to really identify the pain location, is it really in the web space between right. the toes or is it pain underneath in the metatarsal? Um, and that's a big distinction that I do uh, on physical exam. There are some special tests. There's a forefoot compression test where we actually squeeze the toes. A lot of times that would elicit the symptom. And if the symptom is very focused and you know the patients really get that numbness or tingling in those specific two toes, there's pain in between in the web space, right. um, that's pretty indicative uh, or clinically can be suspected. And then the other thing is there's what's called a Mulder click test. Yes, the, is, the X-Files fan, the yeah. Mulder's <laughs> click test, okay? Mm is where Stone. you basically get, you could palpate and feel a little nodule clicking when you actually compress it and you can actually feel it going up. I'm assuming it has to be bigger, a bigger lesion for that or not really? Well, it depends, right? Yeah. I mean, sometimes if it's a big nodule, you could definitely feel it. You yeah. just feel it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, it's got to, everything has to really line up to be a, a true diagnosis. Okay, so now you have high suspicion. 
And then, but you're still not totally sure. Are there any tests that you can order, any extra tests? So I'm assuming you'd always get an x-ray just to make sure nothing Correct. odd is going on. So you want an x-ray just again, look at the bony alignment, make right. sure there's nothing else going on. You also want to make sure that the bones, you know, there's no fracture or stress fracture, or again, any other deformity that you can identify. Right. Um, and then a lot of times people come already with an ultrasound. Yep. Um, it can be diagnostic, meaning they could identify a nodule on that. The only thing is sometimes it overcalls it or is not very specific. It just says could be a nodule, there's a bit of swelling in that area. The MRI is probably the best one to really determine if there is a, a neuroma and a lot of times it'll rule it out. Even if an ultrasound does show a neuroma, you get an MRI and a lot of times it's not there. Okay. So you will, if there is a neuroma there, it will show up on MRI. You remember in situations like Correct. MRI is negative. Usually it's because it's very sensitive. You can really pick up and see the nodule on the nerve or the scarring or tethering to the nerve. Okay, so we've got the diagnosis now. Okay. You've got a Morton's neuroma. Sorry. What are your treatment options? Yeah, so I think the first thing, conservative management is probably the first thing to go with. So number one would be a wide toe box shoe. You want to not cram your toes in. You know, good, comfortable, supportive footwear. Um, you could use anti-inflammatory creams if you have it. Sometimes just to decrease some of the swelling. You can ice your foot after a long day or, you know, get your foot out of it to, you know, to, to get some range of motion circulation. Compression socks is sometimes something that's helpful as well for the circulation. Um, but that would be more the conservative approach. Orthotics with a metatarsal pad is very right. common to offload that area because sometimes, again, it's a combination of, is it a neuroma, is it metatarsalgia? So that could be very helpful to offload that, that zone where people are actually complaining of the pain. Okay, so stop doing what you're doing that's causing it, the type of footwear, uh, rest your foot, ice it, consider an orthotic, consider some anti-inflammatories orally or a cream. And, and just and explain to the people at the wide office, shoes. I'm wearing these shoes because I got a neuroma. Yeah, that's all I Sorry about my shoes. Okay, bozo the clown. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so. Can you juggle? So you've done all that stuff, and you're like, you know what, maybe it's a little bit better, but it still really bothers me. I can't do the things I need to do. I maybe have some pain at rest or at night. What's the next step in the algorithm? Yeah, so that's where sometimes you, an anti inflammatory cream can help, right? Okay. And if that doesn't help, well, then that's where you get sometimes into injections. Okay. And then for the injection, a cortisone injection could be one thing that we sometimes do with some you know, local anesthetic, you would freeze the area and you inject inside that web space where we know there's a nerve, a nodule on the nerve or an aroma. Yep. I think that's the big thing is to have the diagnosis. Otherwise, you're just injecting in an area. If there's no true nodule, then sometimes that could lead to some, you know, you know, ill effects where you get some synovitis, inflammation, you know, skin reactions because you're injecting cortisone in just a space. Right. Right. Yeah, we, I, I mean, I, when I did some foot and ankle stuff earlier in my career, we, I did a lot of those uh, injections, yeah. and they seem they seem to work. Or people told me yeah. they worked just because they never wanted me to do that to them again. But <laughs> is the way. main issue that it's um, potentially not a long term solution, so this can provide relief for a while, but then the problem potentially could come back. Yeah, I, I mean, it sometimes can be treatment, like okay. diagnostic and therapeutic, meaning it, like it actually does take care of the problem. Okay. Um, but ultimately, if it does come back, that's where sometimes there's a role for surgery. Yep. There are other, uh, you know, uh, treatment options that you could read about. There's uh, neuroablation. Uh, uh, people have talked about injecting some type of solution with alcohol that's been you know, shown to maybe be helpful. I don't personally have any experience with those, yep. um, but I have some patients who ask about that kind of stuff. But I mean, I think you more in foot clinics that would be doing that. Okay, okay. so you yeah. tried the injection, didn't work. And if you get the injection, you gotta stop doing the things that were causing in the first place. Stop Correct. doing your sure. footwear or whatever you were doing that was causing it, you gotta change that habit. If you had an injection, share your experience. So now you've had the injections though, and you're like, listen, doc, I need something to fix this more definitively. Yeah. What else you got left in your arsenal? So, yeah, so if, if you know you have the diagnosis, nothing's really working at this point, yep. you try the injection, I think that's where surgery, uh, surgical role will, will, will play a part here. Um, and that's basically what we call a neurectomy, okay. um, where you basically would make an incision, you would find the nerve before it splits and merges to the, it goes off to each toe, right. and you would cut the nodule and the nerve and let it kind of fly back into the foot. Okay. And then basically you're removing the problem and the, the nodule. Okay. Sometimes you have to split what's called the intermetatarsal ligament. That's the ligament that you know um, connects the two metatarsals, and that runs over top of the nerve usually. Right, because there's a question of whether or not it's the ligament that's rubbing on the nerve, or whether it's actually the two bones. There's a little right. bit of debate, right? Yeah. And when you cut this nerve, there's absolutely no consequence to that at all. <laughs> it's a sensory nerve, right? So that's the whole point of that is you're taking away the problem, and again, you have to go over that with the patient, right? Sure. There is the risk of potential numbness in the toe, but the whole point of doing it is because nothing's working and the pain is debilitating for them. Right, right. And the key thing for the surgery is resecting enough nerve. You can sometimes get what's called a stump neuro uh, neuro neuritis, which is inflammation of the nerve, and sometimes you get recurrence of the neuroma oh. if you do not cut it enough so it retracts back. 
All right, and there you go. Okay, and so if people are doing this outpatient, they're walking right away or protecting it for a short period of time, modifying their activity, and so then- So it's a day surgery. You could technically walk on it with a protective sandal right away. Yep. Uh, you know, surgery pretty quick. The recovery is in between, you know, you know, four weeks, sometimes six weeks just for inflammation, but the functional status usually, and the, and the, the symptoms are quite, like um, the, the impact from the surgery is quite apparent right away because you don't have that sure. nerve that's right in that area causing the pain. And quite high success rates, right? Like yeah. 80 to 90% kind of thing success. But it's not, it's not a common surgery that I do. Right. I would say usually we could, you know, you know, successfully treat it without an operation, okay. usually even just not even with an injection, which is those conservative Last approaches. resort. It's, usually, it's very last resort, for sure. You know who'd be proud we were talking about this now? Morton. Dr. Thomas George Morton, or it yeah. could have been Dr. George Thomas Morton. American surgeon, yes. 1876, described yes. the Morton's neuron. Before that, it was just wretched pain in thy foot. Yes. No, I just made that part up. But yeah, Morton, so coming up in a couple of years, it's the 150th anniversary of the Morton's neuroma. And we should be celebrating. We should have a parade. There probably won't be a lot of people marching in it, but we should have some kind of party. shouldn't be marching. Yes, no. they are. Make sure they're wearing good shoes. Or they yeah. had an injection. Now you know. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Morton from America with your Morton's neuroma description. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And thanks to Dr. Aurora for joining us once again. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it.